And we're here with the wonderful Dr. Linda Walsh. Welcome. Yes, it's a wonderful to be here. And it's <laughs> lovely to have someone in the studio. Usually we're all on talking to people online, so it's great. I'm looking at you thinking, oh, this is great. We've got someone here. <laughs> now, a real person. Yeah, a real person. We're not going to let you go. Um, now, you're here to talk about your wonderful Teen Talk Productions. So tell us uh, the basics of it, and then we can get into more about it. Um, well, Teen Talk Production um, is a show that's uh, for youth between 9 and 25 years of age. Um, and all, uh, you know, uh, denominations and everyone is welcome. Um, yes. And as long as they have something to impart um, that is helpful to other youth yep. or they can talk about a range of issues that affect them or they can um, inspire other young people because they've created something or they have a unique sport or uh, they've got a hobby that they like or, you know, something that um, they've done and give ideas to other youth about how to improve their lives. Yeah. Um, we also occasionally have um, adults on there, um, but the ratio is about seven youth to about one adult per program yeah. because we mainly want to focus on the youth. But these adults facilitate services and help for the youth and things like that and, and, and things that help um, whichever, if they want to go into a career, if they want to do different things. Yeah. Um, our, our slogan, our mission statement is for tea too hot. <laughs> and I came up with that because all the young people like these weird things, you know, with these abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. And it means for teens yeah. to help other teens. Oh, and that's yeah. what we're trying to do. We're trying to give the youth a voice, yeah. um, a real voice in these virtual technology times where they're on the computers all the time. They're not communicating directly. Mm -hmm. And it's a platform for them to link ideas and to link help and to link things that they want to um, other teenagers to know. Yeah, it's um, a it's a very positive platform. Yeah. You know, where teenagers and not only teenagers, but people, grandparents, parents, um, can go online and find some information about you know um, places that can help or um, might inspire you to do something different outside of your normal thing. Um, but we are also on channel thirty one. There's a show. You have a hour long show. Yes, please, please, um, please, um, you know, watch our show, watch our program. It's on uh, Channel 31 on Fridays at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there's a repeat on Tuesday mornings at 7.30. Um, it's also just started on uh, Foxtel from June this year, so they're about six months behind with their episodes because they've started from the beginning. Right. Um, so Foxtel is Aurora, yeah. um, which is Channel 173. And uh, they're on uh, Thursdays at five o'clock today. Okay, great. And uh, Friday mornings at four o'clock. I mean, I thought that was a bit of a weird time, but they tell me the uni students come home and watch it after they've been <laughs> out and things like that. So I thought yeah. maybe it's not such a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Um, and I watch the older ones and, and like hold them very dear because mm. um, it's evolved yes. so much. Um, and things like that. Please also go to um, our Facebook page and like us. Um, we need as many likes as possible so that we get a bit more exposure and, and help from other people. Um, and uh, our Facebook page is www.facebook.com backslash Teen Talk Production. And there's there's no S. I did that purposely to be different <laughs> like the people are these days. <laughs> And we've also got um, a Twitter and an Instagram, but they're not used as much because we post the, mainly the photos of the um, interviewees on the Facebook and they're excited to see themselves. And, yeah. and we post things about radio interviews and people that sponsor us and comments and, and things like that. Um, and how do you find your guests that you invite on to talk? Um, well, I, I have these little tickets that I hand out, which okay. I also gave to your son, yes. <laughs> um, which uh, every, every, I decided everywhere I went, you know, if I was going shopping or if I was going to the supermarket or if I, w you know, was doing an errand and paying my bills or, you know, outside the schools when the mums come out. Oh, yeah. Um, that I just uh, gave them out these um, little tickets or if I was out having lunch someone with someone, you know, like there's young children coming home from school or something. But I always yeah. say to them, um, be sure you ask your mum and dad if you're under 18 and mm -hmm. get their permission first. Yeah. And I always say to them, you know, don't be scared. I'm not, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like trying to accost you or anything like that. 
Um, and so I hand out these little tickets explaining how they can contact me and if they'd like to be on the show. Yeah. Um, I also uh, go email different organisations like uh, Canteen and um, uh, what was the other one that we had? Um, um, Another child organisation that you're Oh, yes, with. all different, you know, like uh, sports clubs oh, and yes. yeah. uh, dance schools yeah. and uh, universities and um, all, all places where uh, young people, you know, go swimming schools and, yeah. and I just um, – and also, you know, places, you know um, – you know where they they treat uh, dyslexia and different okay. sorts of illnesses because yep. people have allergies and the young people they're just like mini adults really and they yeah. do have you know issues with you know skin and other mm. things like that so one day i just did a whole list and i just you know from time to time i just do a big you know email and yeah. see what i get back <laughs> um and things like that um no it's great because it's it, it is lots of different subjects but all in the one place so that, you know, when you, um, as teenagers do, go into their own room <laughs> while parents bang on the door, what are you doing? Mm. If you did think, oh, you know, what is this thing about my skin or I've thought about lacrosse but, you know, mum and dad don't know anything about it, here you can find someone talking about it, someone your own age talking about it, what they like about it, um, how they got started. And it's a good reference point for a lot of teens, I imagine, to um, sit and see someone their own age age group talking about it yeah and i in interviewed this lady that teaches african dance and this Great. guy who helps uh, facilitate education for their uh, vce studies oh. um you know and, t and uh, teaches them how to study properly and things like that so any any service that mm. is helpful for youth um they don't have to be nine to 25 or sometimes mm. like if they're really keen and and they're seven <laughs> but I, I don't like to interview people that are not passionate and don't believe in the show so i want them to contact me and say i'm really keen i want to be on this show yeah. um and that makes me reassured that you know they're, they're the right people that yeah. want to be there and so, yes, I've done little ones, like, and I've made an exception, like the mum said, oh, look, they're only seven, but they're really good communicators and they yeah. really want to be on the show <laughs> and they talk about it all the time. And I said, look, yeah. they're most welcome. Yeah. And on the other side, if they're a little bit older and they're in the filming industry and they want to talk about their careers or what they want to get into, I had one guy that he wants to make music videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed also a young girl that she wants to get into animation. She was oh. 19. Yeah. So... Um, you know, I'm happy, like, it's not just for between 9 and 25, but, you yeah. know, like, I've, I've done that so that it just doesn't get out of hand. Yes. You know? Like, I yeah. can't have baby. I mean, <laughs> I'd have to do baby talk then if I started <laughs> ba with babies. No, I think and you've, I, got, a good, you've yeah. got a good cross section There's there. enough teens. Yes. What, what actually inspired this to, to make this show? What was the, the thing that, that made you go, yeah, I want to talk teens? Yeah, true. Um. It, it was it, yes, you're right. It's quite, really right, right out of my comfort zone because my background is, you know, health, clinical, medical mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I, I also studied at Melbourne Uni. I've got a science degree and things like that. So this yeah. is like way out of the blue. <laughs> um, but what happened is, yeah, my my own daughter. I have one daughter. Um, her name's Sabina, and uh, she um, went to live with her father when she was ten. Um, she was quite a shy little girl, but, you know, very happy soul and mm. um, uh, had lots of friends and, you know, they'd come over for play dates and, you know, we'd go to pantomimes and things like mm. that with her friends and stuff like that. Um, and then she went to live with her father. Um, it was a, you know, like, you know court thing, mm. um, which we won't go into, but yeah. um, just shortly after, and I think it was because, not not because, you know, I live on the on the southeastern side mm. but she changed schools and she changed home and she changed uh, family and she changed friends and I think it was a bit all too traumatic for her yeah. and she went to live in the um, northwestern right. suburbs was, yeah. which was a big change and mm. she was okay for, for a year and I thought she was travelling okay and all of a sudden she was almost like 12 and um, she had this terrible nervous breakdown, and I never, I never got an inkling. You know, you know, mm. um, you know, I didn't have that many visits. Like, 
over the time. But, you know, every time I saw her, we would go out for lunch and for a few hours and things like that. I never got an inkling that there was anything wrong. And yeah. she was a very big, very um, avid reader and she was ahead in her class when she was with me. Mm. Um, so I thought, oh, she's got something she'll communicate with me or something like that. Um, anyway, so she had she had a nervous breakdown in um, at 12, which is really early, um, mm-hmm. in November, I think it was November 2014. Mm-hmm. And I got a bit of a shock and the parent, uh, well, I shouldn't say her parents, but her father and her stepmother never let on to me. So I don't know if they didn't know or they just, they didn't want to tell me to worry me. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, she ended up in the mental health department at the hospital. Mm. Um, And then I think she was um, in there overnight and they called me in Mm. um, just to talk about her birth and, you know, her medical history and things like that as they do with the parents. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, you know, why why is this happening so young? You know, how how can it be so young? And mm. you know, you know, my childhood was quite happy, and I never thought about anything like that until I was about you know seventeen, eighteen. I was yeah. just like playing with dolls until I was about <laughs> fifteen, I think. Yeah. It's very so it's, young, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. very very young. So I got a bit of a shock, and then I I in my clinical work I, I do a lot of pediatrics, and I have over the years seen you know, them suffering with a lot of learning difficulties, Mm -hmm. being autistic, being dyslexic, Mm. um, you know, being bullied, um, you know, social media addiction, Mm. climate change, allergies. Mm. There's a whole, and I just thought this this new, brave new world, Mm. the young people um, with all the technology, everything, they just have more to deal with. They still have the same teen issues that we had, but they've got this extra stuff as well Mm. and I think it's just affecting them much earlier and that's why I started them at nine years old because you're not a teenager at nine but I thought nine is like equivalent to um, you know 12 years now to me and you see they're growing up so quickly and I thought and they're all on these computers I don't think that they're talking to each other I don't think that they're connecting Mm. I don't think that they're communicating and with my own daughter I, I got really worried because um, she was not only, uh, she was suicidal, Mm. she was self-mutilating and I kept having these nightmares um, after I went to the hospital like all through November, December, January, like I'd wake up in the morning and I'd think, oh my God, she's, you know, the the hospital's called me that something terrible's happened to her or, you know, like I I was really... Anyway, I had this nightmare Mm. and I woke up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and I I just woke up saying, oh, you know, please, teen, talk, because I thought maybe she's got all the stuff inside her and she doesn't know, she doesn't trust anyone to tell or she can't get it out of her system or, Mm. you know, and uh, she's bottling it up inside because she's a bit timid and shy. Mm. And so I thought, teen, talk. And then I sort of, uh, another night I had this other recurring dream and I woke up and I wrote a little paragraph on the computer about this idea and I thought to myself, oh, my God, I don't have time to write a book Mm. about what's happened. I don't have time to, um, you know, uh, to get things out there, you know, faster or whatever. I thought it's got to like go on radio or it's got to go on TV. And maybe if I can't even, if I can't help my own daughter, maybe we can prevent or provoke change in the system or Mm. stimulate improvement in the world. Yeah. If we find out what's bothering these young people and then we can create better systems for them yeah. um, you know in the community and uh, different ways to help them or facilitate help for them mm. and um, so I wrote this synopsis I sent it um, I don't know like I was just like out of <laughs> I had, a, had an epiphany and out of body experience like now I look back and I thought now I know why these people say they get these you know, and I yeah. was used to think that they were making them up, <laughs> but it's actually that's what it was. Yes. And I, so I was possessed. I wrote this synopsis. Mm. Um, I sent it into this Channel Thirty One because I thought, look, I'll start low because it's a bit of you know crazy idea out of the blue. And about a month later, they wrote me back and they said, oh, we think this is a very unique, good yeah. idea, mm. and we want you to make a pilot. And then I thought to myself, I thought they're going to write back to me and say, oh, it's rubbish, go and crawl back into your little, <laughs> into your little hole wherever you came from. And then I thought to myself, um, they said, oh, we want you to make a pilot, like, for next year. 
And I'm going, oh, my God, what have I got myself into? <laughs> I don't know anything about television. I don't yeah. know anything about making pilots, doing interviews, anything like that. So I went about saying, well, look, let me just have a go. Maybe I can just make the pilot, see how it goes. And then at least I have something, you know, one day to show my daughter and say, this yeah. this is like my my love letter to you, mm. like how I was thinking of you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for posterity or whatever. Mm. Um and so I made, I prepared, I tried to get some producers to yeah. help me and they were all busy yeah. and my show you know, wasn't really priority because I don't think they really believed in it, to be honest. So yeah. I was down the bottom of the list. Yeah. So I waited for about four months um, and I tried to call in, you know, a few faves and things like that, but no one seemed to be keen. In the end, I said, look, I'll be here a year and it'll never get made. So I thought, look, I'll just do it myself. Yeah. However it goes, you know, we'll see, we'll just... Put it out there, see how we go. So then it took me a year from, what was it, I think, from October 2000, no, from about February 2015 to about January 2015. Yeah. I mean, to, um, 16. 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah. No, no, it was the year before, it was 2014. Oh. Right. Um, I went about, uh, you know, getting, uh, w working out how I was going to get the interviewees, making the plan, getting camera people, yeah. where I was going to get the equipment, right. the location. I just tried to organise everything for this pilot. Right. And then I made the pilot in January 2015. Yep. during the holidays because mm -hmm. the kids were available and ah, all that and I was also idea. on holidays. It yep. was a week before they went back to school. Yep. And um, I got a whole lot of people and we did these interviews and they seemed to be very keen. They wanted mm. to do it. And um, once I made the pilot, um, I took it to the station um, like it had to be developed and everything yeah. like that and audio yeah. and fixed and everything like that and we put the title on it and then um, I did some of the editing it was very hard mm. I, I was nearly in there for a week yeah um, and I found that very hard and my head was like <laughs> you know like this is February and I'm doing yeah. like a week of editing I mean I didn't actually cut it myself but I just you know you put the numbers from here take this piece mm. out put this piece in so I know editing is very hard work. <laughs> anyway, so um, took it to the station. Yeah. And they came back to me after about a week and they said, yeah, we're going to broadcast this and you've got to make another 12 now for the season. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, like now what have I done? And so it just went on from there and it just took on a momentum of its own. And so I just tried to repeat the process every yes. time I filmed yep. and tried to refine it and tried to find better ways and – it's it's gone through a different evolution. Like if you see all the different programs from the very beginning, yeah, um, you see a, di a different evolution. But yeah, the idea is to to link all youth together, yeah, and in a common goal. So we all help each other, and I want them to get better, to improve in their lives, and become better and and strong adults. Yeah. But you know, at the moment we're we're really struggling because we live off sort of um, you know kind donations that people give us. We yeah. have a few sponsors that buy a little advertising um, within our program. Yes. And uh, you know we have um, people that we've interviewed that give us gifts for oh, the youth, okay. like yeah. uh, they donate dance lessons or sports lessons Fantastic. or alcohol. Yeah. No, <laughs> we, don't, we don't. No, we don't promote anything. Uh, we don't promote anything that's not not good for um, the youth um, yeah. on our program. But um, yeah, so and we have vouchers to go to fun parks and things like right. that. So um, you know, in return for that, you know, I'll put them on our Facebook page and um, so for thank sponsors, them in our credits. Yeah. So for someone, because actually the teen market is a very hard market to to crack to crack uh, to actually get to because they're on a lot of devices a lot of the time. So for sponsors, this is a really good way. We've got your market here watching. So it's a good way for sponsors to come on board and help out, a worthy cause, of course. Bounce would be interested. To... Bounce, you know, the trampoline company. They've, well, they've... you're speaking on behalf of them. I'm yeah. sure they're <laughs> thrilled. But, um, but it is a really good way if people were thinking, gosh, how do we actually reach teenagers to tell them about our product? 
this is a good way. This is a show targeted towards them that they're watching. Oh, well, you know, we've had go-karts on there. We've had, um, you know, the fun parks, um, two, three, four, fun galore. We've had, um, you know, 10-pin bowling places. We've had um, hard rock school. Um, we've had, um, you know, singing music schools, <laughs> um, dance schools, um and also things like we had a dyslexia therapist who's oh, talking yes. about her treatment and um, all, all kinds of services which, you know, um, which help youth, like disability services and right. um, also, uh, you know, Teen Connect, which is a, a network for, for teenagers who have disabilities and autism and things like that. Yep. So all, all range of, you know, study things and, yep. um, you know, whatever, you know, it can be travel, it can be food, it can be entertainment, it can be hobbies. Yep. And, I, you know, I love this girl that she said, um, she was nine and I interviewed her and she said she watched the Olympics and she yep. wanted to do archery because she said not ah. many people did it. Yeah, yeah. So just really unique. Um, and yeah. there's a game called Swordcraft that this other girl came and talked about. And they okay. do foam swords and they pretend to be metal e evil. They get dressed ah. up in metal. Yeah, yeah kids love that. And yeah. I thought, this is really cute stuff. And people out there don't know. And we had some mm. lacrosse oh, yes. girls, like yeah. from the Chadston lacrosse team, come and talk to us and yeah. things like that. Great. So I just I just think the um, it, it's limitless, like oh, um, the different yeah. ways that, that people... Um, can come on and we've also had private donations I've had people that you know have given us um, you know um, a few thousand dollars here and there and they said we really like what you're doing we want you to keep doing it and stuff like that I mean yeah. sometimes it's a bit few and far between yeah. it's been hard to get to, admittedly to get into the corporate market but maybe it's because I'm not from this industry I don't know how to navigate well I'm sure as things. you go it's all about um, your um what do you call it? Visibility, I guess, online and stuff as well with corporates. So, um, you know, a, a, you're certainly doing it the best thing going forward, getting more and more guests, more visibility out there. So, and Ali, Ali Walsh, of course. Yes, yes. Like from uh, Ali's I, publishing, I, yes. Yeah, from Ali's publishing, Ali's books. Um, yeah. And I met her through a young little girl who I interviewed who was writing poems, and yeah. her name was Siota. Ah. And she uh, mentioned Ali to me, and then I got into contact with Ali, and then I've um, interviewed a few uh, children's book authors yes, yes. and also I ask them how you know they got into children's book writing and what inspired them and from what age they knew that they were going to you know write children's books and things like that because I think these are also good career paths mm -hmm. yeah, for young people if yeah, they want to yeah. get into journalism or um, you know being authors and publish books and, and things like that yeah um, you no, know it's so, great so if you want to catch the episodes it's on channel 31 Fridays at 4 and then repeated early in the morning. <laughs> Where yes, was that? Um, yeah, so channel thirty one, which is a uh, digital channel forty four, I yes. think on the on the yes, station that's right. now. And it's Fridays at four PM. Yep. Um, and repeated then. And on. repeated on so the first run is on the Friday yep. and it's repeated on the Tuesday morning at seven thirty. That's a good that's time. Right. Sometimes they watch before they go to school and ah, things like yes. that. But we not not only that, we also um like I said, we're we're six months behind on Fox Till Aurora, channel yep. one seventy three, and that's on Thursdays. But it's good fun to watch the um the original episodes yes, as well. It's beautiful. Um on Thursdays at five o'clock. Great. And Friday mornings at four o'clock, but it's not only for teenagers. I want people to understand that you know parents like it, grandparents yep. like it, Great. Um, you know teachers, um, all hobby enthusiasts, counsellors, practitioners. Like I think it's anybody that's invested in young people. Yeah. Um, like like this program. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. great and it's really interesting. Um, thank you for your setting it up and um, <laughs> your continued work with it. And we look forward to having you in again to talk about where it's going to go from Foxtel and the new Channel 31 where it goes online next year. So thanks for coming in and talking to us about it. It's a great positive platform for teens and for, and for parents and grandparents and all your information online. Just go to teentalkproduction.com.au or find them on Facebook. Thanks, Dr. Linda Walsh. Thanks. <laughs> can't say one last thing. You can oh, say of course you, you can. can say two things if you want. <laughs> two things. <laughs> what would you like? Um, I, I'd, I'd like to ask anybody out there that I really think that this program needs more exposure. So I would like to see it broadcast on another station. 
and uh, you know probably I could you know swap that for you know like um, station or equipment or things like that and anybody out there who wants to volunteer to come and help us and I always pay the volunteers something it's not like a proper wage I call it pocket money <laughs> but anyone want, who wants to come on you know help with the cameras with yeah. the editing Fabulous. with the social media yeah. um, because I'm a bit of a dinosaur and I don't do <laughs> the social media or any students out there that want to get involved in, in the filming industry and want yeah. to learn um, you're all very welcome Fabulous. And where, where is it? What what where are you shooting it? At We we usually film in South Yarra, in mm -hmm. the South Yarra area, and mm -hmm. we have uh, different, you know, halls and churches that we, we approach to help us because we're a bit poor and we can't afford um studios and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um but I think the quality is still very quite good, um, despite the fact that we, we haven't got um, you know, like a studio or professional yeah, it's great. Um, things. Yeah. So you can go to the website, contact us, and Linda will get back to you. One of her minions. <laughs> <laughs> One of her minions. The minions. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Thank you.